All right, in this video, we're going to go over the touch-off procedure, which, just like the edge finding, is a manual method of locating uh, a part or a fixture on your coast runner bed. Uh, just like with the edge finding, you will note that we uh, always warn you when it's time for touch-off, and we'll give you a nice long description of how to do your tough touch-off. In fact, currently, it's so long that it actually cuts off the button a little bit. Um, and you may have to pull your software down in order to get access to the button. Uh, we may fix that before we actually release this, but in any case. Um, so you'll have this full description of what to do, and when you've read through this, when you've watched the video and you're ready to start, um, click Next. And it's going to begin by um, moving the tool over to uh, a location near where the touch-off needs to happen. And I'll explain uh, what this means in a second. For now, let's just click Next, and you'll watch the tool move. And there we go. Um, I'm not exactly sure if you can see where the tool is in the video, um, but it's a couple millimeters away from the uh, north-facing edge of the um, of the stock in this case. Um, the idea behind touch off is that you're going to gently approach that tool up to the stock uh, until it pinches, in this case, a piece of paper, um, and that you know that the tool is, is essentially touching the edge. Um, that's how you touch off in Z. Z is, of course, the plunge and the retract of the spindle. You can use the edge finder to do manual probing uh, for X and Y, but for Z, you have to do touch off. So that's why we're doing it. In any case, uh, just like with the edge finder, we're going to begin by opening up our manual entry window by clicking this joystick button down here. Um, if you don't remember from the edge finding video, the idea is that normally in CR right, you're operating in the guided mode where everything is done for you. But occasionally for things like touch finding or for uh, touch off, you will need to open up this manual operations window and assume direct control over the mill. Um, and of course, you should only do so, um, unless you know what you're doing, you should only do so when the machine tells you to do it. In any case, um, we're going to use the jogging feature of our manual operations window. Um, jogging is set up currently to be a limited jog. It's only going to move a certain distance per click or per jog command, uh, which we have set to one millimeter in this case, one millimeter. Um, and over here are our buttons for jogging the spindle. Uh, negative is to plunge and positive is to retract. So uh, right now we're pretty far away from our workpiece. You can see that by looking over the top of it. And so I'm going to plunge one millimeter at a time towards that workpiece until I get kind of close. Something that is convenient is that generally our work uh, pieces have some kind of reflectivity or at least uh, kind of mirrors the tool and so as I start to jog towards it and I'm not sure if this will show up in the video but as I start to jog towards it I can see uh, the tool start to really approach itself in the mirrored finish of the um, of the workpiece and of course I'm looking in my chip guard mirror in order to see that but once I've gotten there relatively close I'm gonna take a piece of paper and you know I like to use sticky notes you can use whatever piece of paper you want and I'm going to take it here I'm gonna hold on to it and the idea is that as I continue to jog, I'm going to be moving my piece of paper back and forth uh, to see when it starts to get pinched and when I can't move it back and forth anymore. You'll recall, if you watch the edge finding video, that with the edge finder, we can get it uh, to touch the edge and we can actually get it to go you know, past the edge a little bit because that's what the edge finder is designed for. It doesn't hurt to do that. That's not so much the case with touch off because if you go uh, too deep with touch off, then you'll put uh, pressure on the stock, on the bed, you might move it out of place. It's probably not gonna hurt anything, but it's not super desirable. And so we're gonna be a bit more careful here. Now that we think that we're pretty close to our edge and close enough to have the paper in there, I'm gonna immediately switch down from one millimeter per jog to 0 0.1 millimeter per jog. And uh, I'm also going to switch over to my jogging hotkeys. Instead of clicking the buttons in the UI, I'm going to use the hotkeys for jogging, which are defined here under key bindings. Um, by default, they're the arrow keys for X and Y, and for Z, it's uh, the A and the Z button. Uh, and because I want to plunge here, that's what I'm going to use is my A and Z. So I'm going to start pushing the Z key to jog 0.1 millimeters 
per push, right? So you'll hear it start to jog, little tiny bits of jogging, and I'm going to start moving my paper as I jog. Now, of course, if you started too far back, you may find that uh, it takes a while to get the paper pinched, but that's okay because we don't really want to crash it. In any case, you'll notice that I just managed to get it pinched, and now I can't move the paper very neatly. Um, so we just pinched it with 0 0.1. I'm actually going to back it off 1, and now my paper can move again, and I'm going to switch to 0 0.01. Again, how accurate you want to be is dependent on your needs. Um, sometimes just the 0 0.1 millimeter is sufficient accuracy. Uh, because we're making this clamp, which is going to be used for future um, precision operations, I do want to get it as precise as I possibly can do, and so I'm going to jog again with 0 0.01 millimeter increments, which is close to a thousandth of an inch. So once again, I'm using my Z key, and I've already kind of got it to the point where it's just about to pinch. There's now some resistance between my paper and the workpiece. So I'm going to hit it again. And we're getting more resistance. I don't know if you can hear in the video, but it's scraping and scratching the paper. And we're even more resistance. I think one more will probably pinch it proper. Yeah, there it is. So now I can't really move it anymore. It's properly pinched. When it's pinched to the point where I can no longer move it, that's where I say, okay, now the tool is in the right place. Um, and because it's in the right place, we can close our manual operations window, and we can click Next. It's going to ask us to confirm, hey, is the tool actually touching the face? Is the tool pinching the paper between its tip and the face such that the paper cannot move? This pop-up is here to make sure that you've done things right, to make sure that you're not just clicking through really quickly and maybe accidentally skip over the fact that you need to do the touch-off. Um, if you click no, it'll just close itself and take you back here. But if it is properly pinched, as ours is, we're going to click yes, and it will take us here where we need to record our location. This is where we actually write the Z value of the spindle to our WCS register, so that the machine knows where the part is in space. And there we go. We wrote it, the spindle retracted. You notice our paper fell down. Um, I will wait until the machine finishes moving, and then I'll carefully reach in there and pull my piece of paper out. Sometimes I've seen the paper actually stick to the workpiece, in which case it's easy to just pluck it off. You don't want to leave it in there. Um, it'll get dirty with chips, um, and if it's stuck to the workpiece, uh, it'll mess up. Well, it probably won't mess up the milling, but there's no need to, to have it in there. Uh, anyways, we've just performed our touch-off successfully. The mill now knows where the part is, and so you're ready to move on to your next step.